Hello everyone, today our group will present about the microbiome dynamics in health and diseases. Microbiome is the collection of all microbes, such as bacteria, naturally living inside us. There are about 800 trillion microbes that make up the entire human microbiota. The gut microbiome is associated with many different diseases. Recent success in microbiome field has allowed us to develop different interventions to tackle these diseases. Our goal is to answer the following question. Can we accurately predict whether an infant develops? Type 1 diabetes based on the changes in their microbiome. Our data set contains microbiome sample of 19 infants collected during the first three years, divided into four subsets of metadata and time series data. The sample and subject metadata contain information about the subject, the collected sample, the time of data collection, and whether a subject is in a control group. The abundance data contain time series data of this sample broken down by taxonomy. And lastly, the abundance metadata include information such as delivery route and gender. Next, Patrick, we will go over our EDA. Thanks, Janice. We first looked at the profile of the subjects for the non-microbiome data and found that they were well-controlled with respect to gender, HLA risk, delivery route, and country of origin. For the microbiome data, there is a medium of six observations per subject, ranging from about day 250 to around day 1000. Focusing on the last observations, there were three predominant phyla. Each phyla is known to perform different physiological functions, such as the metabolism of carbs and the digestion of animal proteins. The data suggests an interrelationship between the two most prevalent phyla. As the number of firmicutes increases, the number of bacteroidetes decreases. There also looks to be a change in the profile of the microbiome, with a sharp increase in firmicutes and only a change gradually in bacteroidetes. The higher FB ratio for the control suggests this lowers the odds of having type 1 diabetes. Similarly, the Shannon index shows that the case group has more instances of lower diversity, which is consistent with other studies. For a baseline model, we made a fully connected neural network on the metadata with five dense layers, a dropout layer, and L2 regularization with a sigmoid output. Over 100 epochs, we achieved a test accuracy of 75%. I'll now turn it over to Terry to show our advanced modeling results. Thank you, Patrick. Using the metadata of the inference and the zero data in each microbiome measurement over time, we built a better model using recurrent neural network, RNA. We tested for a simple RNA layer, GRU layer, and LSTM layer in the RNA model. Here's the architecture for the benchmark models. We started with two input layers for the static and zero data. After masking the zero data, we pass them to two RNN layers with 256 units. Then, the output of the last RNN layer is concatenated with the static input, and they are passed to a dense layer with L2 regularization on the kernel and bias. The dense layer uses sigmoid as the activation function, and we use binary coarse entropy as the loss function, and Adam as the optimizer. In the testing set, the model with simple RNN layer obtained a testing accuracy of 50% only. It predicted all inference as having type 1 diabetes in the test set. The models using GRU and RSTM achieved a testing accuracy of 100%. Based on the benchmark models, we fine tuned our hyperparameters on the numbers of RNN layers, L1 versus L2 regularization and also the hidden size for the RNN layers. First, we tried one versus two versus three RNN layers while keeping other hyperparameters fixed. In simple RNN model, one layer is the best in terms of the highest testing accuracy and the lowest testing loss. Similarly, two layers perform the best in GRU model and three layers perform the best in LSTM model. Next, we tested for L1 versus L2 regularization on the dense layer after concatenation. In terms of the highest testing accuracy and lowest testing loss, L2 regularization was better in simple RNN model and GRU model, while L1 regularization was better in LSTM model. Then we test for the hidden size. We found that 256 units was better in simple RNN model and the GRU model while 64 units was better in the LSTM model. Then I pass the time to Claire for model comparison and the final model choice.
Our final model is the two-layer GRU model with L2 of 0.01 and hidden size of 256. This had the smallest test validation loss of 0.011 and highest test accuracy of 100%. Overall, our final model was successful in predicting whether an infant developed T1D or not. As for the others, the simple RNNs had the worst performance, perhaps due to vanishing gradients. LSTMs performed similarly to GRUs, but with a small data set and considering resources, GRUs are preferred. In the future, we would expect a data set with more microbiome samples to benefit from the computational power of LSTMs and may drop outlying subject data with samples less than or equal to three. We would consider dimensional reduction with autoencoders and contrasting results with a regularized LSTM. Lastly, analyzing the most influential microbiome species in the prediction of T1D development may influence new therapeutic innovations, the ultimate goal. These are our resources. Thank you for listening.